I have already shared the introduction in the group. So we heartily welcome Maharaj and I request everybody to ask questions only related to the sessions and please avoid generic questions. And as I said, there is only five sessions in this unit and four sessions in the next unit. So we have to go on time. So I request everybody's cooperation and utilize the mercy and blessings of Maharaj. We once again welcome you Maharaj. Over to you Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjali Tanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pritarine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So my welcome to everyone and thank you for giving me this opportunity to present this section of the Srimad Bhagavatam, specifically Third Canto Srimad Bhagavatam, Kapila Shiksha, beginning from chapter 25. Is everyone able to see the PowerPoint? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. All right, so as you can see, as Maharaj said, we're having, it will be two units, first five chapters and then four chapters. Uh, let's see. So you finished chapters 20 to 24 and you heard about the appearance of Lord Kapila Dev. And ch this chapter 25, of course, this was the chapter which Srila Prabhupada's lectures were uh, transcribed and put into the form of the book, Teachings of Lord Kapila. Prabhupada also lectured on chapter 26. There's a number of uh, recordings of Prabhupada's lectures on chapter 26, but they were never published. And because chapter 25 is more specifically connected to bhakti. All right, so you can see the titles of the topics which are brought up in the different chapters. 25, dealing with bhakti, 26, talking more of jnana, and 27, coming to liberation for the jnani. Then chapter 28, we'll describe a stanga yoga, and 29, we'll hear about bhakti, pure bhakti, and bhakti also in the modes. And then the other chapters, a little lighter than the first five chapters, shorter and less philosophical, more descriptive. We'll hear about Tamagun, and then Rajagun, and then Sadvagun, and we'll hear about Devaki's Bhakti in the final chapter, the result of Lord Kapila Dev's teachings to his mother, will be described in the final chapter, 33. We've stated here, what happens if we do not even follow karma yoga? <laughs> then the, the, result, the results will be that we will, we will simply be on the material platform and we'll be under the influence of the modes of nature. So Lord Kapila Dev is going to describe to us about the mode of ignorance, the mode of passion and the mode of goodness and conclude, the whole chapter is concluded with um, Maitreya describing about Devahuti's Bhakti. All right, so chapter 25, the glories of devotional service. Here is the very wonderful illustration, Lord Kapila Dev seated there above his mother, 
And his mother is inquiring from her exalted son. So the, the chapter begins, first six verses, it's an introduction to the topics of Sankhya Yoga, particularly topics of this chapter. And then we will hear different questions put by Devahuti. Devahuti is a very intelligent lady, remember? Who's her father? Who's the father of Devahuti? Swayambhu Manu, right. And how did it happen that she got married to uh, Gardama Muni? Who arranged that? She expressed her desire and uh, Swayambhu Manu. How did on she? On the instructions of Brahmaji, arranged it. Was it the instruction? Who instructed Devahuti about Kardama? Narada Muni. Yes, I think so. I think Narada Muni was the one who had come and told her about Kardama. And so she had her desire, and her father facilitated the desire of his daughter. How many daughters does Swayambhuva have? Nine daughters. Huh? Nine daughters. Swayambhuva Manu. How many? Two daughters. Three daughters. Three daughters. Three daughters. Prasuti, Akuti, Devahuti. Three daughters and two sons. Yes, right. <laughs> Getting a bit confused here, right? Mm. Who had who had nine daughters? Kardama Muni. Kardama Muni. Kardama Muni and Devahuti, yes, they had nine daughters. What happened to them? Uh, they, have been, they have been married to the different uh, uh, rishis at that time. Right, yes. They were given in marriage. Good. Okay, so then we will hear Lord Kapila introducing Sankhya Yoga to his mother Devahuti after being questioned by Devahuti. Lord Kapila will introduce Sankhya Yoga to her. And he will go on to describe about the supremacy of bhakti, verses 20 to 27. We will hear about why bhakti is superior, how it is superior to other forms of yoga, specifically karma and jnana yoga. And we will hear about the importance of association with devotees, sadhus, and how that opens the doors to devotional service. And then Devahuti has more questions. Prabhupada used to say intelligent people will have questions. So Devahuti is a very intelligent lady. And she, has, she does have very nice questions, which is actually the whole theme through this, these chapters is based on the questions of Devahuti. And then the final section of the chapter, Lord Kapila will describe Sankhya as a combination of devotional service and mystic realization. So that will be the concluding section of the chapter, right? So you can see the different sections here. There's five sections, six sections there. The connection with the previous section. Kardama Muni had taken sannyas, leaving Devahuti with their son, Kapila. Shonaka Rishi desires to hear now about the activities of Lord Kapila and his instructions on Sankhya philosophy. So where is Shonaka Rishi? Where is he? Naimisharanya. Right, he's in Naimisharanya. So he's speaking to, who is he speaking to? Suji Maharaj. Shonaka Rishis. Shonaka is the head of the sages and he's addressing? Questions to Sutta Goswami. Sutta Goswami, thank you. Sutta Goswami, right. 
Sutta Goswami was there. He was elected. He was put there to speak after Lord Balaram removed Ramaharshan. Then the son of Ramaharshan, Sutta Goswami, took over. So Shonakarishi wants to hear about the activities of Lord Kapila and his instructions on Sankhya philosophy. So it had been described how Kadama Muni in Devahuti had a son. What was special about their son? He's the Supreme Lord himself. Right. He's the incarnation of the Lord, right? He is the Lord himself. So Sutta Goswami continues narrating this conversation which took place between Vaidura and Maitreya. Maitreya and Vidura. They were discussing this and Sutta Goswami was describing to the sage, sage, sages in Naimisharanya. Right? Here's the first verse. Sri Shonaka said, although he is unborn, the Supreme Personality of Godhead took birth as Kapila Muni by his internal potency. He descended to disseminate transcendental knowledge for the benefit of the whole human race. All right, so Shonaka Rishi's describing how the Lord, Kapila Muni is the Lord and he's come as the son of Devahuti and his purpose in coming to disseminate transcendental knowledge for the benefit of the whole human race. And so the incarnations of the Lord generally come with this purpose they want to do some good for the world and Kapila Muni's particular purpose was to give this transcendental knowledge. So Maitreya continues, when Kadama left for the forest, Lord Kapila stayed on this, the strand of the Bindu Sarova to please his mother Devahuti. When Kapila, who could show her the ultimate goal of the Absolute Truth, was sitting leisurely before her, Devahuti remembered the words Brahma had spoken to her, and she therefore began to question Kapila as follows. And that's going to be described in texts 3 up to 6. We'll have Devahuti's questions. So Brahma had spoken to her. What did Brahma have to say to her? Do you remember what was Brahma's particular... Uh, in, what, what did he have to tell her? He had good news for her. The Lord will come and give the knowledge, transcendental knowledge. Right. Will appear, the Lord will appear in the, as a son. Right. The, the Lord's coming as her son. Right. So that's something nice to know when she's delivering her child, that the child is not an ordinary child, but he is actually the Lord himself. And he's coming, he's going to guide her, not only her, but... It's going to guide all the conditioned souls. Okay, we'll go ahead. Here's Devahuti, and we can see her situation. She's a very good candidate for spiritual progress. As said here, Devahuti said, I am very sick of the disturbance caused by my material senses. For because of, this sort, because of this sense disturbance, my Lord, I have fallen into the absence of ignorance. This is a very nice realization to have. 
निवृत्ता नितरम ब्रह्म भूमन असत इंद्रिया थक्षनत थर्षनत she is very sick of the disturbances of the the senses the material senses asad indriya tarshana the senses always disturb us five senses always disturbing us so devahuti understood this is a very nice realization for a woman to have generally we we don't find that women are so much in able to understand these things but devahuti is a very enlightened lady all devotee ladies actually are enlightened ladies the devotees ladies devotee ladies are different from ordinary materialistic minded ladies So Devahuti says she's sick of this the disturbance. This is a very good qualification. And we, uh, can you think of any similar situations in in our Srimad Bhagavatam studies? Kunti Maran. Kunti Maran. Yes. What was going on? What happened to Kunti? Go ahead. Tell me, what did she say? What did Kunti say? She wants the Lord to be always present, so she wants the messages to continue with her. No, oh, that, that that the more there are miseries, do you know the verse? Yes, thank you, Mataji. Do you know the translation? There will be more miseries. Uh, If Lord uh, is present, the Lord Darshan is there. They can overcome it very easily. Yes, Queen Kunti prays. I wish that all these miseries. What's the word for miseries? Vipada. Vipada, right. The first word in the verse. Vipada shantusha sattvat tatra tatra chakka. I wish that all these miseries would happen again and again, so that I might see you again and again. For seeing you means we, I will no longer see birth and death. So, and then we have also Queen Kunti saying that Janma uh, Aishwarya Shruta Shribir Etamana Madapuman. Yes, do you know the rest of the verse? Naivaruti apidhatuvaitvam vichana gochara. Tvam akinchana akinchana gochara. What's the meaning? Can you explain to me? Uh, even though I don't have any qualification and uh, Aishwarya and all are like pride giving me pride so uh, you are the akinchana gochara you are the master of those who have who have, who have nothing else. No balance to it. So, akinchana gochara means materially impoverished. Yes. Shelter of the materially. Materially impoverished. Right. The the those who are on the path of material progress cannot know me. If we are in, absorbed in the material life, thinking about janma and aishwarya. And Shruta and Sri, the good birth, the 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 money, the beauty, the education. If we're always thinking about these things, then it will be very difficult to progress in our spiritual life. So when we get, when we become disgusted with these things, sick of them. Then we become a good candidate for spiritual progress. So we have to become a kinchana gochara, materially impoverished, meaning not that we have to give up everything, 
but we do have to become detached from these things. If within our mind we're always thinking of these things, then it will be very difficult to progress. So if you can develop this kind of mood, just as Devahuti has, to be very sick of these desires which are there due to our material senses, then we will be in a healthy situation to cultivate our spiritual advancement. So Devahuti understood, she said, I have fallen into the abscess of ignorance. And that she's in the mode of, she's in ignorance and she understands it. So she's, so she's so intelligent, she's come to her Divine Son and she's asking Him for some help, for guidance. Prabhupada explains, we should know that beyond these temporary senses are our permanent senses, which are now covered by the material body. Eternal sensory activities are called devotional service, whereas temporary sensory activities are called sense gratification. Would someone like to explain to us more what is Prabhupada, what point is Prabhupada explaining to us here? I mean an ordinary person, a conditioned soul, reading, hearing this, they will be puzzled. Could you explain it in Simple words? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu, please. Uh, Prabhupada actually he wanted to emphasize on uh, how the person in the material world is situated. Either he can take up the devotional service as one path or he can get addicted himself to the sense gratification and stay permanently in the material world. If he has to take devotional service, he will be uh, ele elevated to a uh, higher position and he can go back home, back to Godhead. Whereas if he is attached to the material world, he will be always struggling hard in this material world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Maharaj, can I tell something? Yes, please. Maharaj, Maharaj it looks like that Yukta Vairagya. Or we can say we have to use our senses in the uh, for the uh, serving to the master of the senses like Krishna, Rishikesh and Rishikesh. Ah, oh, yes. Very good, Prabhu. Yes, that's a good verse to bring up in relation to this. That our senses have to be used in the service of the master of the senses. Hmm. And Prabhupada mentions about beyond these temporary senses, are our permanent senses. So we have the material senses, but we have also the permanent senses, if you like, the spiritual senses, which are covered by the material body. So, which senses are we meant to use in the service of Krishna? Permanent senses. Right, yes, the, the permanent senses. They're the ones which are meant for devotional service. Unless one becomes tired of material, there's no opportunity to hear transcendental messages from a person like Kapila. Tired of sense gratification. It's a good qualification to actually hear, without, be, if we still have within our world, then it will be very difficult for us to hear the transcendental knowledge coming from a person like Kapila would come. Many people would come to hear him, but not everyone would take Prabhupada's message or Prabhupada's teaching seriously, because they, they still have the desire to enjoy the material world. Prabhupada came to teach pure devotional service. 
He's delivering the message of Rupa Goswami, and Rupa Goswami is delivering the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they're teaching about pure devotion, but not everybody's ready for that. They want, they still have within their mind this desire for happiness in the material world. However, Devahutis, she's ready. And she expressed that she was tired. Now that her husband had left home, she wanted to get relief by hearing the instructions of Lord Kapila. Kardama Muni left home. But was he irresponsible? No. Why not? Completed his duties. What was his duties? Uh, he married his daughters. His son is there to take care of his wife and uh, to fulfill his uh, 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 whatever been promised to the Brahma and everything he has done, whatever been said, he did that one. And later on, with the, under the son's shelter, he left her wife. Did he leave them enough money to look after themselves? When son is there, there is no required the money, son will take care of that one. Was house there? <laughs> was, the, was the son able to earn? <laughs> of course, he's the Supreme Lord, he can arrange everything. Yes. All right, so that was from the purport, text number seven. We'll go ahead. Oh. Uh, a comparison to a, a situation which is described in the sixth canto in relation to the story of Maharaj Chitraketu. Now, those of you who are, I think probably you've all heard the story of Maharaj Chitraketu, how he wanted very much to have a child. And he had been, but then he was visited by Angira and Narad. And they gave him the blessing, they, they helped him, you know, that here's some, some that give this to your wife, your fit, and she will have a, a child. So the wife gave birth, the child died, because the other wives were all envious, and so they gave poison to the child, and the child died. And so then Maharaj Chitrakit was really in a, a lot of pain, a lot of misery. He was really suffering. And so here we have Angira instructing Maharaj Chitraketu. He says, when I first came to your home, I could have given you the supreme transcendental knowledge. But when I saw that your mind was absorbed in material things, Specifically, what did he want? What was the material thing he was absorbed in? He wanted a son. Yeah, he, 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 he's a king. He, naturally, he wants a son. You have a kingdom, you have no son. No, then what's the good? Nobody to pass the kingdom on to. So he got his son. He said, so Angira said, I gave you only a son who caused you jubilation and lamentation, right? Harsha Shok. The son was going to be the cause of jubilation and lamentation and the sages warned Chitraketu that this son will be the cause of jubilation and lamentation. So Maharaj Chitraketu thought, oh, no problem, let's have the son, we'll be happy and we'll deal with the lamentation when it comes. But he didn't think that the lamentation could be the death of the son. <laughs> so, anyway, after he lost his son, then Chitraketu was more ready to receive the instructions from Angira, and he got transcendental knowledge. So, similar situation. So, we want you also, little exercise for you, to share your realizations of situations in your life 
when you became more serious about self-realization. How many people do we have in the class this evening? 26, Maharaj. 26. Oh, quite a big class. Okay. So, that's 13 pairs. Are, would you be able to put everyone into pairs, please? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, thank you. Is everyone clear what you have to do? We we'll just we don't have a lot of time, but you can take like five, seven minutes. Seven minutes should be sufficient. Share your realizations. You both, you should each have some kind of realization, some situation in your life when you became more serious about self-realization. We hope you've become more serious about self-realization. <laughs> so please. Can I open the rooms, Maharaj? How yes. many minutes? Yes, seven minutes. Okay, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, who's in this room? Sri Prada Radha Devidasi. Mataji, Hare Krishna. I'm not hearing anything. Hare Krishna, Sri Prada Radha Mataji. Radha? Recording stopped. Padmasundari Madhaji. Padmasundari Mataji, you know, I was put into a room there. There's yeah, no, there is nobody in that room. There's nobody speaking. There's, yeah, there is nobody in that room. So I just put you outside, Maharaj. I thought, Actually, I thought th there was some name there. There was some name, some. Yeah, because there, one person locked, there is a Mataji here who hasn't joined the discussion. Mataji, I, uh, I, I was there waiting, no one joined. Mukunda Murari Prabhu didn't join uh, Rajeshwari Mataji. So, can you go out and come in Rajeshwari Mataji because uh -huh. I couldn't move because I'm, I'm requesting they're not joining. So they're just not there. It means that they put their, they pretend they're there but they're not actually there. Maybe they went to the restroom, Maharaj. <laughs> Rajeshwari Mataji, please log out and log in. They're supposed to put their cameras on. Not everybody puts in because MI has uh, put a rule right now, Maharaj, that uh, we are not supposed to force them to put the cameras on. Oh, really? Yes. It's because of that now we have no control on the virtual ones. Who made that? But this class is from the Middle East, Maharaj. They are all from different parts of the Middle East. Oh, they're all from Middle East, huh? Yeah. Ex-Middle East devotees and Middle East. Only few are from India. Maximum are from Mal Balram Desh, Mathura Desh are maximum, and other Krishna Kata Desh, that is uh, Qatar, and uh, Damodar Desh, Dubai, few of them are there. Mm -hmm. But Balram Desh, Bahrain, and uh, Mathura Desh, Muscat are majority. 
<laughs> okay. That time is the evening, Maharaj. Yes. Yeah, right. I know. For them, it's not an issue. They wanted this time only because many are office and temple. Yes, right. I, yeah, I know. I, I gave classes for them before. I was like 9 till 11, not 8 to 10, 9 till 11. All the teachers struggled to give the class here because of their timing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And being in Mayapur, you feel so sleepy at 10 o'clock. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> Easiest thing is to go there and be in the Middle East. <laughs> when I was in the Middle East, I am from Middle East, Maharaj. I am from Krishna Katadesh. I stayed there for 21 years. Oh, my God. When, when I was there, I don't feel I stay here six months. I stay there six months. It's oh. like that. Oh, okay. Five months in Mayapur, one month in Parikrama and Turi, and six months I stay there. Because the rule is I have to be in the country for six months according to my husband's visa. Oh. I stay here and there. Man. The last two years I'm now settled in Mayapur. I was praying Krishna, please, and Mahaprabhu to make me to be in Mayapur. So with family I'm now in Mayapur. By all your blessings and mercy. <laughs> okay. And the uh, four minutes is there, Maharaj. Two minutes more? Four, four. Only three minutes gone. Okay. Maharaj, you will be able to give class on 17 because there is a class according to the schedule on 17, the day on the Adivas. The day of Adivas? Yes. For Gaur Purnima? Yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't think. 18th is Gaur Purnima. Huh? 18th is Gaur Purnima. I don't need to do the Adivas. I don't. Okay, Maharaj, because I have to make the change in the schedule. Yeah. I've sent the schedule in WhatsApp, Maharaj. Okay. Guna Pujita Mataji, are you there? Kindly unmute and let me know if you are there because you haven't joined the group. Okay, I think we can close everything. Yes, my dear, one minute time. I'll start the recording when everybody joins, Maharaj. Okay. Recording in progress. Okay, everyone's back. Yes, Maharaj. So yes. We'd, we'd like to invite some of the groups, they can share what they discussed. Do you have any good realizations? The Shram Prabhu has raised his hand. Yes. If you permit, Mataji, I can share or uh, we have Radeshwari Mataji with me and me myself. So she's a very senior devotee in around 30 years more than the Aspal Ramdesh. Uh, but we discussed that uh, primary qualification for the become a devotee should be a, some uh, like humbleness, tolerance, truthfulness and honesty should be there. 
these qualities will come with the devotee association and serving the devotees with the following of the instruction of the guru then we become a self realized what is the self realization is to understand that i am a soul and part and parcel of the supreme i am not the body this is the self now this realization when we apply on ourselves as per mata ji in the last 8 months because of the corona and all these things she has a lot of issues in the health problems in the families and lot of things man she has almost shaken with that one but because of the faith in krishna and she realized that what is happening because of the mercy of the krishna or she is having she is giving thanks and she is doing her duties and serving the lord and serving the krishna and devotees and with that she has overcome with that her her faith has been more strengthened and she is still able to hold it and this quality is a humbleness has been increased more and she feels the really the devotee of association and she feels that theoretically mm-hmm. still she know the self realizes she is but practically still she need a time to become a self realization thank you guru maharaj thank you, thank you so much. much very nice prabhu yes certainly the pandemic situation gives us all an opportunity to become more serious about self realization yes. understanding understanding that we can leave the world at any time and of course we've seen some of the devotees who were very much loved and appreciated by all the devotees how they left our association suddenly without warning krishna took them out of our midst and so that's something which we are all faced with this the danger the temporary nature of our life certainly it's an impetus to uh, to make should make us more serious about self realization yes someone else is like to offer their ashish prabhu has raised their hand has yes. raised his hand up yes bhagwat pranam sir maharaj so uh, i was in team with punya shri mata ji i think both of us shared that in periods of calamity or or you know like serious medical situations uh, with ourselves or with uh, family members that leads to some some serious uh, intense prayers and and you know and uh, a real progress in in bhakti that's what uh, both of us discussed uh, maharaj uh, hari krishna serious family situations yeah with with health situation or or you know uh, some some calamities all right maybe calamity some kind of calamity maybe maybe health related maybe other and when we become more serious about self realization then what will we do hopefully we will reach out to the devotees and we will take more t- we will become more more serious about our chanting and more conscious about our different activities trying to become a better devotee more chanting more hearing and remembering krishna thinking of krishna as our best friend even offering prayers to him yes we'll just take one more contribution is someone else there let's hear from maybe a a mataji charada goringi mataji has raised her hand all oh, thank you charada Hare Krishna Maharaj Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Mataji uh, Pr- uh, Maharaj I was paired with Chita Hari Chandra Prabhu and we were discussing the realizations each of us when we became more serious with this Mataji we can't hear you Hare Krishna <laughs> Mataji we can't hear you Ah 
ियल थिंग्स एंड वी हैव इंक्रीज रीडिंग केपेबिलिटीज एंड एस्पेशली वेन वी विजिट द होरी धाम्स वी वुड लाइक टू मीट अदर डिवोटीज एंड डिस्कस विद दैम रिगार्डिंग कृष्णा एंड नथिंग मेटीरियल दिस वॉट वी डिस्कस महाराज महाराज देर आर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट्स आस्किंग वेन देर कैन रेज क्वेश्चन Yes, they're welcome. As we go, on. I'm I'm open to hear have questions as we go through the class. No need to keep them. If you have a question now, bring it up. Ashish Prabhu has raised his hand, and Gopi Jana Prabhu has raised his hand. Yes. What? Ashish Prabhu, please go on. Dhanvat Pranam, sir, Maharaj. Maharaj, here uh, Mother Devuti is is saying that you know I am tired of uh, this disturbances caused by the senses. and in another purport shila prabhupada writes that you know unless one is completely frustrated uh, with his material engagements uh, there is there is no serious progress in in uh, uh, bhakti so so is there a way to induce uh, this tiredness or or frustration with uh, material aspects well I would say the way you could induce that is by simply cultivating more understanding of the nature of the material world. If we are thoughtful, and if you read Shri Prabhupada's books and the commentaries, then certainly we will become more appreciative of the misery and the hopelessness, the futility of endeavors in this material world. but it it should it should be you know it's going to be easier for some than it is for others some people will have a natural or they'll be very close to it, maybe as a result of their previous lives that they've already had a lot of uh difficulties and experienced a lot of troubles in the, their life from the past and they they come to this life so they're pessimistic about the future of a materialistic endeavor i think that's one way in which we can induce it uh, one way is simply by hearing about the, the the nature of material existence and the, all of our scriptures they they really help us in that matter we were just and uh, you know i'm here in mayapur and we were just on parikrama and we heard for example about uh Sam samudra sain samudra sain he was a material no he was a materialist and he was very attached to sense gratification but somehow narada muni came there and enlightened him So that's another way in which we can induce this tiredness by association with devotees. If you get mercy from a devotee, just as we heard Shri Prabhupad as a young man went to meet Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. And as soon as he walked in the room, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati immediately addressed them. and said why don't you preach the message of lord chaitanya and, and then of course we know our shila prabhupad he argued back that oh you know i'm a follower of gandhi and we have to get independence first and when we get independence for india then we can preach the message of lord chaitanya but bhakti siddhanta sarasati argued back and said no you're wrong it's wrong krishna consciousness is so important 
it cannot wait for some political adjustment. So Bhaktisiddhanta argued so strongly that he convinced our Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And Prabhupada understood he was really a great soul and later on, he, later, 11 years later, he was initiated. He took, you know, he connected again and became the disciple. So that mercy, sometimes he's, the sadhu is the one who has, he can bring the knife to cut and he will cut the attachment to the material world with his strong words, with his strong preaching. So this is the real meaning of a sadhu, that he has that ability that he can cut us away from the attachments to the material sense gratification. So the mercy of a sadhu is really very great. Now you can get that mercy just by reading Prabhupada's books. Because Prabhupada put everything there in the books, and you read Prabhupada's books, you can feel the mercy, his strong preaching. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Gopi Krishna Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj. Please accept my humble wishes. Maharaj, the moment you said uh, about Samudra Sen, we remembered all the pastimes of Mayapur, how he tried to. Um, resist uh, one of the Pandavas to see Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I have one doubt here. I mean, I'm not clear when when that uh, temporary senses have come. How can we understand? Uh, are there any, I mean, uh, separate senses in, in our body that there are some temporary senses or uh, permanent senses or the same senses which are otherwise being used in temporary sense enjoyment will be purified to the... How, how can we understand, Maharaj? Can you throw some more light? Yes. Uh, well, we should appreciate that we have a material body, a gross physical body, but at the same time we have also a subtle body. And finer than the subtle body, is the spiritual body. So the spiritual body also has form and also has senses. Wow. And we have to understand it in that sense. That the, the senses of the gross body, they're going to stay with the body. They're temporary. But the spiritual senses, they are accompanying with the soul. Okay. So, there are senses there in the spiritual body. And these sen those senses in the spiritual body are dedicated, fully uh, engaged, simply in the service of Lord Krishna. They have no other purpose, no other function, no other consideration because it's, it's a spiritual body. That's how I understand it, Prabhu. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead. There's one more hand raised, Maharaj. Oh. Venkateshwar is going to Prabhu. Oh, really? Okay, yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Danda Pranam Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, uh, Devuti, being uh, the wife of Karthama Muni, a great devotee of the Lord, we also have this sloka, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Khoi, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. And uh, Maharaj in uh, 3.25.7, she is saying that I am very sick of the disturbances, uh, Maharaj. Yeah, because she's always stayed with the devotee, a dear devotee of the Lord, who always meditates on the Lord. And uh, what made her to say that she is sick of the disturbances, something related to material. Having received this Sadhu Sangha for a long time, long period of uh, Kardama Muni, but still she says that she is very sick of the disturbances due to her uh, material things or something like that. Maharaj, how do I understand this? Well, you've studied the previous chapters. You've heard about what happened with Kardama Muni and Devahuti. You know, they didn't exactly go for Sadhu Sangha. You know, they went off to enjoy. They went to, you know, Devahuti desired to have a child, 
and the uh, Kadama Muni made all arrangements for their sense gratification because in order to produce progeny, he understood that we have to create the, so a little more passion. And so he created the aerial mansion and then they went off to places like Mount Meru and they enjoyed all kinds of uh, very heavenly atmosphere and, and they had a lot of what you might call, you know, not exactly sadhu sangha because they were busy in the matter of progeny. They had nine daughters and one son. And so they were busy with these things. And so that definitely, that's not really sadhu sangha, they were, they were focused on that. And now, then, but then Kardama Muni, he had told before, at the time, you know, once we have a child, I'll be going. And so he kept his promise, he remembered. He'd done his duty as a husband, he'd given the wife the child, now he, he has to go and perfect his life. But we would say, well, why does he need to leave home? He's going to look for God. God's already there in his home. He doesn't need to leave. <laughs> but, no, he made the promise that he should leave. He went to show the example also. And Prabhupada explains that he says, there's no need to leave home provided the home is conducive to spiritual advancement. But if there are problems, if it's not conducive, then sometimes better to go. Uh, one of our senior, uh, senior devotee, uh, Srila Mahavishnu Goswami, who is no longer in this world, he passed away at a very elderly age, but he, he mentioned he used to say, he said, it's better to go, and when you go, they will say, where did he go? Where's he gone? But if you don't go, they'll, they'll wonder, when is, when is he going? If the family are saying, when are you going? It's not very good. But if they say, where is he gone? That's okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. Very good. Okay, we'll go ahead. Right, Devahuti is questioning to Kapila Muni, uh, to Lord Kapila. First of all, dispel my illusion due to my false ego and created by your own Maya. Question one, explain about Prakriti and Purush and then it's answered in verses 12 to 27. And then Sankhya philosophy, as is well known, deals with Prakriti and Purush. Purush is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or anyone who imitates the Supreme Personality of Godhead as an enjoyer. And Prakriti means nature. In this material world, material nature is being exploited by the Purushas, or the living entities. The intricacies in the material world of the relationship of the Prakriti and Purush are the enjoyed and the enjoyer is called samsar, or material entanglement. Explain why Devahuti said, my engagement in sense gratification was also due to you. <laughs> so, why would Devahuti say like that? My engagement in sense gratification was also due to you, due to Lord Kapila. Lord Kapila is the Supreme Lord. So how can Devahuti say her engagement in sense, sense gratification was due to him? Would someone like to offer a suggestion? Yes, go ahead Prabhu. Yeah, so uh, because the material energy also works under the uh, supervision of the Lord, 
so so she she is saying here that you know i was entangled because uh, maya also works under your directions yes very good right the material energy is the lord's direction the lord is merciful if anyone wants to forget him and enjoy this material world he gives him full facility not directly but through the agency of his material potency therefore since the material potency is the lord's energy indirectly it is the lord who gives the facility to forget him devahuti therefore said my engagement in sense gratification was also due to you now kindly get me free from this entanglement that's purport of text number 10 the yoga system lord kapila will describe here are some of the different qualities which lord kapila will describe first of all it is yoga ad adhyatmika pumsam related to the lord and the individual souls it's not just for the lord it's related also to the individual souls it is also nishraya shaya meant for bestowing the highest benefit on everyone we certainly all want some benefit adhyanto paratir yatra dukashya cha sukashya cha makes one indifferent to all so-called happiness and distress in this material world we become indifferent transcendental we shouldn't be disturbed by the happiness and distress of the material world and then it is yogam sarvanga naipunam serviceable and practical in every way we like things which are practical this is krishna consciousness very practical other systems of self-realization really not practical and serviceable not at all serviceable but krishna consciousness very practical very serviceable yoga concerning the jivatma Ad adhyatmika is approved as the most beneficial method for oneself nishraya shaya it has three types bhakti gyan and astanga yoga for bhakti benefit for oneself is a secondary effect being situated in this yoga one uproots material happiness and distress doing devotional service one is not concerned for oneself one's thinking about others we think about others benefit we don't worry about our own self this is vishwanath chakravarti thakur's explanation his commentary on it the goal of sankhya yoga is to transfer one's consciousness and one's attachment from matter to spirit from the body as oneself to the devotional service of the lord text 13 to 19 the consciousness has to be changed from matter to spirit from the body to the self that is the real goal and here the different stages of yoga first of all we have to distinguish between matter and spirit krishna consciousness and maya consciousness so maya consciousness this is for those in the bodily concept in the they're only concerned with matter so that's maya consciousness but those who are on the spiritual platform they want to be krishna conscious then we should understand that the mind chaitas is the cause of bondage and liberation for the jiva attachment to the gunas causes bondage 
but attraction for the Lord causes liberation. We want to get free of these modes, the gunas, these ropes which are tie, tie, tying us to the material world. How to do it? By becoming attracted to the Lord. So this is a secret. Prabhupada was always trying to encourage the devotees to become more attracted to Krishna, painting Krishna, doing things for Krishna, printing books for Krishna, cooking for Krishna, everything. Get attracted to Krishna. With this understanding, we must purify our consciousness through devotional service so that we can stop identifying ourselves as enjoyers and controllers and become situated in our constitutional position as Krishna's servants. All right, so purification. Stop thinking we're the enjoyer. We're not the enjoyer and we're not the controller. Remember our constitutional position. That's a big step up to get through that. By practice of knowledge and renunciation and devotional service, one sees everything in the right perspective and becomes indifferent to material existence and the material energy acts less powerfully on him. So when we actually practice devotional service in the proper manner, then automatically knowledge and renunciation will awaken there, within the heart of the devotee. As we said, devotional service is serviceable and practical. So this knowledge and renunciation, they follow wherever there is devotional service. We just have to endeavor to be a devotee. And devotee means to be the servant, not to be the controller, not to be the center, but to be the servant. Going ahead, text 19. Perfection in self-realization cannot be attained by any kind of yogi unless he engages in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For that is the only auspicious path, Shiva Panta, right? The uh, only auspicious path. So any other kind of yoga won't give us the same result. We have to do devotional service. Text 20, an important verse. Prasangam ajaram pasam atmana kavayo vidu sa eva sadushu krito moksha dwaram apavritam. Every learned man knows very well that attachment for the material is the greatest entanglement of the spirit soul. But that same attachment when applied to self-realized devotees, opens the doors of liberation. Remember Devahuti had come before her son, feeling very depressed and sick of the material world. Lord Kapila is telling her, you have to transfer your attachment from the... Devahuti, remember, she would be attached to her husband, her great husband. Kardama had gone away and left her. And so she would naturally be feeling that separation from her dear husband. She'd been married to him for some time and together they'd had this children and certainly the children, with the children it would increase the attachment. But that same attachment, Lord Kapila is explaining to his mother, transfer the attachment to the self-realized devotees and that opens the door of liberation. 
Now, you were saying, a devotee brought up the topic that, well, her husband was a great devotee, he was a great soul. He could produce the, the personality of Godhead as his son. Yes, but he was not, the, the wife doesn't think of her husband like that. That's a problem. It's, you know, you can't expect the wife is going to think of her husband as being a great soul. Uh, just like Prabhupada's wife, you know, Prabhupada's wife, she, she couldn't think of her husband as being a great soul. She was thinking, why he spends all the time writing all these books? Mm. So Lord Kapila instructs his mother, you have to become attached to a sadhu. And then he continues, text 21, the qualities of the sadhu, right? The, yes? All right. Yes. Uh, the attachment that you are saying, like, uh, can you give some characteristic of the right attachment? Uh, how we should, uh, what kind of qualities of that right attachment? The right attachment. Well, the main thing is you want to associate with, you want to hear from them, and you want to give service to them. Just like we say, when you approach a spiritual teacher, how do you approach him? You inquire from him. You, well, first of all, you submit yourself humbly before them. You inquire from them and you render service. So that kind of attachment, the mood like that, you're coming before a, a self-realized devotee, we have to become attached to them, and the attachment means, in the sense that we can be purified by their association. They have knowledge which they can give us, and they can help us to get free of our entanglement in material life. We want to take advantage. How to do that? By inquiring, rel proper inquiries, by humble submission, by service. That is the attachment which should be there. All right? Yes, ma'am. Then the symptoms, how to recognize the sadhu. Here you see external features, tolerant, friendly, merciful, no enemies, peaceful, follows the scriptures. All these characteristics are sublime. Sadhava Sadhu Bhushanaha. Personal application. We will we ask you some qualities of a sadhu mentioned which you find particularly inspiring. And discuss your plan to further develop these qualities in yourself. Without breaking into groups, we will just simply ask you as a class, would someone like to select some particular quality of a sadhu which you find particularly inspiring? For example, which particular quality of Srila Prabhupada did you find particularly inspiring? Sankarshan Prabhu has raised his hand. Yes, Prabhu. Of tolerance uh, is what uh, uh, always impressed me uh, because uh, the tolerance is not from the external uh, your challenges from uh, within. So that tolerance is always I would look look forward to improve upon. And whenever uh, Shri Prabhupada's an event comes where tolerance is highlighted, really. International Prabhu. How do you do yourself in tolerant? Are you a tolerant person? Uh, not uh, Maharaj, <laughs> working by your blessings, uh, probably I can imbibe some uh, uh, quality of tolerance which uh, helped me. Hmm. How do you think, how do you think you could develop your tolerance? Uh, to think uh, uh, beyond, because sometimes uh, with the short-sighted approach, uh, you know, we uh, we uh, in, infer the situation or the uh, or the personality in the wrong way, and we conclude something wrong. I mean, 
and uh, uh, that uh, that bother us i mean why i i reacted to that situation why i concluded that way rather than we being devotee having vast i mean uh, uh, the lookout of uh, anything which is happening in front of us so i, I should tolerate i should not react and uh, see from the shastra's perspective see from the the personalities who are in the great like uh, aguru maharaj i mean whenever some uh, pain happens to me myself then we have ideals in front of us which teach us that to tolerate tolerate because your pain is much lesser than what is there uh, uh, what is there the personality who are suffering so that way uh, tolerance uh, i mean uh, 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 we have to, i have to think on uh, those uh, uh, that way to be more tolerant maharaj okay you're working on it very good yes nice shardna gorungi mate ji hi krishna mate ji am i audible mate ji the network is very bad yeah you're audible please go on hi krishna Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, the quality which I find in Prabhupada that's very inspiring is fearlessness. Oh, fearlessness. Yes. Yes, very good. That's a nice quality to inspire and be inspired by. How did you... At an age... Uh, at that age when uh, shila prabhupad was very determined uh, to follow the instructions of his spiritual master uh, it's very inspiring that at his age he is so fearless and he has gone all the way from india with, uh, where he could where where nobody was really interested in what shila prabhupad was doing for preaching the activities of uh, krishna consciousness but as instructed by uh, his spiritual master uh, he is, he goes to the western world and in an environment which is totally different from what india is shila prabhupad being empowered by his spiritual master and the acharyas he could really make this mission so successful and this has really inspired me hari krishna would you be able to develop that quality in yourself to become f- more brave or with less less fearful uh maharaj i don't have any qualifications but if i get the mercy of the devotees i really would like to have this kind of fearlessness in me hari krishna maharaj well no we're asking you the question is how do, how would you plan to develop this quality in yourself you know if you're you know maybe you may be say as well as a woman you know i'm not going to go to a foreign country on my own of course and try to preach i'm not a sanyasi you know women are not sanyasis they're not expected to do things like that but they do, they do have to have some courage and they have to be a little bold sometimes to be as as devotees Right? Do you have that quality? Are, are you are you very afraid of showing people that you're a devotee? And not at all, Maharaj. I'm not afraid. I'm I'm very proud to represent the mission of Shri Prabhupada, and I I as instructed by Shri Prabhupada to wear the tilak wherever you go, as we do it, and then as far as preaching in places where there is. A, a mixture of community where it is not really very conducive we we try but uh, uh, most of the time when we go there will be times when people are not very uh, happy with the way uh, our activities are being preached but still we go on uh, we, we, we go on we go out to these people again and again we don't give up and uh, this is something which we would like to go forward with Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, yeah, we should be inspired by some of these different qualities of the devotees. It's very important for us to learn from them and to 
cultivate something of their mood. Here we have some more, text 22 goes on to describe something more about the nature of the, the sadhu who we, we're supposed to become attached to. So it's described here more about the sadhu that he engages in staunch devotional service to the Lord without deviation. For the sake of the Lord, he renounces all other connections such as family relations and friendly acquaintances within the world. Engaged constantly in chanting and hearing about me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the sadhus do not suffer from material miseries because they are always filled with thoughts of my pastimes and activities. Alright, so it mentioned here something about uh, renouncing all connections such as family relationships and friendly acquaintances within the world. Does it mean in order to be a sadhu we cannot have a family and we cannot have any friends? Is that allowed? Is that pop proper? That in order to be a sadhu, we shouldn't have a family and we shouldn't have friends within the world. Do you agree? No, more no. Yes. So what's your idea? You're not going to follow Kapila Muni, is it? We need not be attached uh, to them. Yes, we don't need to be attached to them. We should have friends, but hopefully they will be devotee friends. If we have friends with people who are not devotees, it will be difficult for us. It's not good. Naturally, you're working with people who are not devotees, there will be some connection there. But it, it won't be an intimate, loving relationship. And as far as family relationships, I mentioned earlier that if the family is not an obstacle, so long as the family is not an obstacle to our devotional service, there's no reason to renounce. We don't give them up. But, there's a question, Maharaj. Yes. Thank you, Teshra Prabhu. Please go on. Hi, Krishna Maharaj, Dandar Pranam. Uh, Maharaj, uh, the statement which uh, Maharaj mentioned now, that uh, we should not uh, mingle with the people, worldly people and materialistic people. Maharaj, how will our movement expand, or it has been expanded till now, including me, I was a materialist before, but due to the compassion of a devotee, which actually transformed me into a devotee, Maharaj. So I was also a materialist before joining this uh, wonderful movement. So some devotee has inspired me and brought me into this moment. So the same thing I should also uh, give it to uh, some worldly people. Yes, Maharaj? yes, that's a different thing. But when I'm talking friendly acquaintances, we're talking about loving relationships. Generally, loving relationships are between one devotee and another devotee. Now somebody gave you mercy. They brought you into Krishna consciousness. That's a different thing. But that's not in the, the field of friendly acquaintance. Friendly acquaintances. The, the activities are described. Of course, we discussed, you've mentioned, you studied before in Nectar of Instruction, the loving relationships between one devotee and another. Dadati pratigrinati guyamakyati prichati bhante bojayate chaiva sadvidam priti lakshanam. Loving relationships between one devotee and another. You offer gifts, they accept gifts, offer prasadam, accept prasadam, inquire confidentially and reveal your mind in confidence. That is friendly acquaintances. That is those kind of relationships devotee keeps. 
but friendly acquaintances within the world, you have to be careful. Uh, you, 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 of course, you have to live in the world, you have to work with people who are not devotees, but we're conscious about not, you know, we won't want to eat their food, you don't want to, you know, if they're not devotees, you're not going to eat something they cooked, you know. And you don't know what, how they cooked it or what's in it. So you, you have to be a little careful about these kind of things. We don't accept food from other people. If they give money, even if they give money, then we can accept it and give it to Krishna. Just like somebody may want to give give you something, maybe you did some service for them or some, and they want to pay you and you say, no, no, it's okay, don't give me. But they say, no, no, please take it. So then you take it and then you go and you give it to the temple. You don't take it for yourself. You can take money from materialistic people, you take their karma. So we're careful about dealings with others who are not devotees. Of course, it's much more difficult in the family. If the family are not devotees, then it can be very difficult sometimes. We do have a number of devotees in that situation, where sometimes the family are opposed, they're against their people becoming devotees. But it's, it's just difficult. What can you do? We're in the, you're in that situation. And Prabhupada, that's why Prabhupada left home, ultimately, that his family were not so supportive. For some time, of course, he remained, but finally he decided that no point to stay at home. Elder in age, and it was time to go, so he went to Vrindavan. All right, so these are some different symptoms about devotees. Maharaj, there is one more uh, hand raised for oh, question. Okay. International Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Maharaj, my question is like we have read in the purport in the previous slides, sadhus do not suffer from material, desire, material miseries. How to understand this Maharaj, to enlighten on this? Yes. Uh, sadhu does not suffer from material miseries, means material miseries may be there, but he's not suffering, it's not going to cause him suffering. He can, he can tolerate it, understanding that he's not the body and he puts up with these things. It's misery, suffering is in the mind, the, but the sadhu is not controlled by his mind. So although the, the body may be diseased, the body may be in some pain, but he will tolerate it because he knows he's not the body. So there's no suffering for one who, can, can, who has control over the mind and senses, then they're on the transcendental platform. So they're not disturbed by the mind and senses. So, the, the, it, the suffering is simply in the mind, and the devotee can tolerate all these difficulties, knowing that he's not the body, he's not the mind, he's not the body, he's not the mind also. So he doesn't become disturbed by the mind. Do you understand? Thank you, Maharaj. Is it subtle, Maharaj, like uh, from external point of view, like um, Maybe Kanishta Adhikari or uh, means uh, the fallen Karvi people, they understand that how he is such a great sadhu, then why he is suffering? So such questions come. So how to convince such uh, people, Maharaj? That well, you have to understand the suffering of the sadhu is not material. The sadhu, is, he's on the transcendental platform. It's not karma. The ordinary conditioned soul, he suffers karma, but when a sadhu suffers, when a sadhu is in some difficult bodily situation, it's Krishna's arrangement to take away all of his karma so that he can go back to Godhead. Prabhupada explains, 
There's the kitten in the jaws of the cat and the rat in the jaws of the cat. They're both in the jaws of the cat. It's the same place. But there's a kitten. Kitten's not worried, not having any problem. But the rat, he knows. He's in trouble. He's going to get it. The cat's really going to, you know, going to kill him. So like that. Devotee suffering is not like the suffering of a karmi or the conditioned soul. The devotee, is, his suffering is the arrangement of Krishna to take him back to Godhead. But the karmi, he's suffering and he will suffer more. You understand? Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. But Maharaj, like, uh, Lord is so merciful and Sadhu is doing so much uh, um, good to the people or good to the society, country. Why Lord should uh, you set uh, like a uh, bad example? The Lord wants to use the Sadhus to teach other people. Just like Pandavas suffered, the Lord yes. was using the Pandavas to teach how you have to tolerate and how you should be fixed in your devotion, even though you're in difficult situation, even though some unfortunate, unforeseen crisis is there, devotee will tolerate and he will use it to become more devotee. He will not say, why me? He won't say, oh, why me? Why I get this? I'm a great devotee. Why I'm suffering? No, devotee doesn't think like that. The devotee will remain fixed in his devotion to Krishna in every situation. And the Lord uses his devotees to show that. You understand? Thank you very much, Maharaj. All right. Going ahead. Text 24, Purpur. We have to seek the association of such devotees. For this reason we have begun the ISKCON Society. There are many mercantile, scientific and other associations in human society to develop a particular type of education or consciousness. But there is no association which helps one to get free from all material association. That ISKCON is doing to get us free from all material association. If we associate properly in Krishna consciousness, we'll get free from all material association. Here's this wonderful verse. You're all, have you all learned this verse by now? We can chant it together. Satam prasangam mama so the association, in the association of pure devotees, that is Satam Prasanga, then the discussion of the pastimes and activities of the personality of Godhead, they're not discussing mundane topics. Discussion with the devotees. We discuss the pastimes and activities of the Lord. We don't discuss the politics. We don't discuss the news. We discuss Krishna, the Lord, and his pastimes and activities. Then it's very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation. And thereafter, he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. Shradharati bhaktir anukramishyati. Right? This shraddha. This is becoming fixed. This is beyond anartha nevriti. 
It's not the beginning. This is beyond anatta nivritti. And then rati and bhakti. What is that bhakti? That is actually prema, prema bhakti. So real devotion and devotional service begin. Based on Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary, only by association with devotees does the mind develop attraction to the Lord. The stages are described here. The previous verse mentioned that association should be desired. Then faith or shraddha first arises. If the quality of one's association with devotees is not so good, then there is bhajana kriya. But my pastimes do not become nectar. From excellent association, prasangam, my pastimes become nectar for the ears and thus cause anartha nivritti. Understand there's different kinds of association, quality association. So it may be with association with devotees, it may be not so good, the devotees are not so serious or so advanced, but still some association is bhajana kriya. But it becomes more nectarian with higher association. So that higher association, excellent association, prasangam. And that brings about anartha nevriti. Not just bhajana kriya, but anartha nevriti. That's the benefit of higher association. By hearing regularly, one becomes nishta. The, these narrations produce direct realization, samvada, of my great qualities, virya. So hearing regularly, that will give us, that will bring us to the stage of nishta, fixed. We have to hear. Prabhupada has the morning program, Srimad Bhagavatam. Every day you have to do hearing, chanting. Those topics then produce ruchi. They're pleasing to the ear and heart. Ritkarana rasayana. From the taste, joshanat, of these topics, asakti, shraddha, and then bhava, faith, or rati, for the Lord, who destroys material existence, appears. So be careful there where it says, shraddha uh, rati bhakti anukramishyati, shraddha rati. Shraddha is this asati, and the rati is bhava, and bhakti is prima. Finally, prima follows in this order, anu. The bhakti explained by me now will be preached in the world following this sequence. This is the explanation to this verse given by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. It's describing how Lord Kapil is going to give bhakti. All right, Devahuti has more questions. Text 28. What kind of devotional service would be suitable for me to immediately attain your lotus feet? Sometimes devotees want that. They want something immediately. I want to get this quick. What's the quick process? Immediately I want to get the result. And then, what is the mystic yoga system that completely ends material existence and leads to the ultimate goal, the Supreme Personality of Godhead? So questions are there, text 28 and 29. Here's another question from 29. 
How many ways can we understand that yoga? So Devahuti asks, what type of bhakti is suitable to you? And what is possible for a person like me, by which I can attain your feet, full of bliss? Oh, this is Banuswami's translation. Okay. And then question three, what is, what is the gyan by which one understands tattvas? This is Banuswami's text 29. So that question is answered in chapters 26 and 27, right? We'll hear about the jnani and what is the knowledge by which one understands these tattvas. And then, what is the yoga mentioned by you which is aimed at the Lord for liberation? How many limbs does it have? That will be answered in chat. Maharaj, question one and two, can we have that slide again? Text 28. No, the Banu Maharaj's question. Oh, Banu, Banu Maharaj's, okay. But we don't have Banu Maharaj's first question. We have this one, text 28. Banuswamis. Thank you. And question three, what is the gyan by which one understands tattvas? What is the yoga mentioned which is aimed at the Lord? How many limbs does it have? That will come 29. We'll hear about the Astanga Yoga. Oh, here it says, also answered in 28. All right, the Bhakti Yoga system is just like an arrow aiming up to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This bana or arrow is so sharp and swift that it goes directly to the Supreme Personality of Godhead penetrating the regions of impersonal Brahman and localized Paramatma. This is Bhakti Yoga, just like an arrow, so sharp and swift, it goes directly. Describe text 31, Maitreya said, after hearing the statement of his mother, Kapila could understand her purpose and he became compassionate towards her because of being born of her body. He described the Sankhya system of philosophy, which is a combination of devotional service and mystic realization as received by disciplic succession. So that's in text 31. Sankhya is described as the combination of devotional service with mystic realization. Lord Kapila said, text 32, the senses are symbolic representations of the demigods and their natural inclination is to work under the direction of the Vedic injunctions. As the senses are representatives of the demigods, so the mind is the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The mind's natural duty is to serve. Our natural, the natural duty of the mind is to serve. But unfortunately, the mind becomes independent, it becomes rebellious. <laughs> Described here, the mind is the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's meant to serve. Excuse me, Maharaj? Yes? 
Maharaj, what is mystic mystic uh, realization? Well, mystic realization, it could be different things. We, this word mystic yoga, mystic realization often comes up in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mystic indicating it's not of the material realm, it's a higher level of realization. There are many different realizations which are going to come up. Which particular realization the Sankhya system is describing? Well, we're hearing, we're hearing about the, the, the Sankhya is a combination of devotional service and mystic realization. What is that mystic realization? It can also be described as the meditation on the super soul, which is a big part of the Sankhya system, meditating on the super soul realizing that we're not the body, that there's a, there is such a thing as the super soul. Okay. There's one more question, Venkatesha Prabhu. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, actually this were this question, particular question, or some few slides uh, before Maharaj uh, about that transition from Shraddha to Prema. Yes. In that, in the second uh, uh, point, Maharaj. Yes. I'll, I'll read out, Maharaj. I have taken a photo of that one. I'm just. Uh... Yeah, the ear, the bash, yeah. This one. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. In the in the second one, Maharaj, where the bhajana kriya I've mentioned, no, the second one. Uh -huh. if the, if the quality of one's association with the devotees is not so good, then there is bhajana kriya, as mentioned, Maharaj. How do I understand this, Maharaj? It is mentioned devotees is not so good. It means that devotees are not so expert, they're not so realized, they're not so elevated. Then there is bhajana kriya. That's what. Uh, yes. But when, the, when there is excellent association, and then the word is taken from the verse, prasangam, right? Satam prasangam mama virya samvido. So Kapila Muni was describing the association which is excellent. So then you get that taste that you're tasting the ras, the nectar of the hearing. So, you know, certainly the, the better the association, the more you'll be inclined to hear. Right? Okay. And so that higher association, it said this, uh, is the cause of anartha navriti. Okay. Maharaj, in continuation to that, I have some question, Maharaj, on that. Yes, what's your question? Like normally, expert devotees are uh, isolated, and majority of them are not so good, and they overrule the excellent devotees. This is my little experience, Maharaj. Would you enlighten on this? They overlook? Like majority carries the point, the um, Prasanga devotees are less and uh, not so advanced devotees are more. So majority uh, dominates the uh, Prasangas. In such situation, how to deal? Well, we have to understand that we don't know exactly who is going to become Prasanga Association. They may, they may be neophyte, they may not be so elevated at this particular time, but they may go on to become very elevated. So, we have to be careful about judging people. 
the fact is that the, the association, it, it doesn't just depend only on the speaker, it depends also on the audience that we ourselves have to be worthy and we have to be mentally prepared and eager to hear. Right? This is made very clear in the very first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Sonakarishi is glorifying the, the audience, that the audience, what is their qualification? And what is the qualification of the speaker? So the, the, both the qualify, both are required to be qualified. It's not just a question of only the speaker which makes the association excellent. But the audience also, they also have to play their part to make the excellent association. You understand? Little Maharaj, not fully. Really? But I'm trying to understand. <laughs> Yeah, well, Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, we st you had studied this in the first chapter. If you look over that first chapter, he's glorifying the, you know, the, 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 the audience, they have to be he eager to hear. They're very eager, they're very attentive. You know, they're not playing with their mobile phones and looking at their messages and their chats and so on. But they're really focused on this Srimad Bhagavatam. And they're not thinking, oh, when will he finish, you know, <laughs> like that. You know, they're really focused, they're really on that, they're into it. So that's important, it makes a big difference. You may have the best teacher, but the class are not into it, they just, don't, they just have no interest. What can the teacher do? And so both the audience and the, the speaker have to be qualified. Sometimes you have the, 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 the speaker's not qualified, sometimes the audience is not qualified. But if both are qualified, then you get the excellent association. Okay, we'll go ahead. This reasons explaining how bhakti is superior to yoga and mukti. Anybody would like to suggest ways? Why is bhakti superior to yoga and mukti? Because it gives ultimate uh, love of Krishna by doing bhakti. Okay, that's very nice. You get love of Krishna, that's the, that's the goal of life, right? Prem punarto mahan, to develop love of Krishna. Susukam. But, yeah, anything else why it's superior to yoga and mukti? Uh, Hare Krishna, um, Maharaj, can I speak on this one? Please do, Prabhu. Yeah, uh, bhakti is the uh, main, sadhya and sadhana both are same. And we can get a mukti and yoga through, uh, 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 through bhakti only. We cannot get a mukti without bhakti. Do we need to be, be Siddha to get and, the benefit of and yoga and mukti? Yoga is a, uh, associate, yoga is we get united to the Krishna Supreme. And mukti is the getting free from the material detachment. In one way you can say the Vairagya and Jnana. You know? Knowledge, yoga is the uni, union with the Krishna. So both can be get only through the bhakti. So we, do, without bhakti we cannot get. One thing is the second. When we are in the bhakti, mukti become very low because for us, either in the, we are in the material world or in the eternal world, for us it doesn't matter. So our attachment will be totally focused on the, because we already united with the Krishna. That's why the bhakti is more superior, which unite us with the yoga and mukti both. Yes, very good. Yes, right. Bhakti actually we say begin, we, bhakti begins from the liberated platform. Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma Nasochati Nakanchati, right? That bhakti is beginning from the liberated platform. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, one may not uh, do any austerities to get uh, 
liberated because one who is practicing Krishna consciousness or devotional service, liberation is guaranteed, Maharaj. Yes, right. Liberation is guaranteed. Devotee ha doesn't have to worry about liberation. It's already there. What about yoga? It Prabhu's hand is up, Maharaj. Yes? Arikshma, Arikshma, Maharaj, Maharaj, Bhakti, there is no pre-qualifications required, whereas the yoga is requires the pre-qualification. Really? What? Like the uh, how for himself to perform the yoga, but whereas Bhakti, there is no pre-qualification. Anyone, at any time, any place, they can perform the Bhakti. I'm not quite sure what are these pre-qualifications for yoga. Yeah, Krishna says uh, we need to select the uh, proper place and sitting position. Oh, okay. Yes, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Many things. But Bhakti can do anywhere, right? Yes, Maharaj. We have also in the sixth chapter that the Bhakti Yoga includes all the other yogas, it's also there. One who is a bhakti yoga, he's also automatically a karma yogi, a jnana yogi, a dhyana yogi. It's all included within bhakti. And bhakti is the topmost yogi, so superior to yoga. Okay, just to go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. I just would like to add one point. Yes. Dandar Pranam Maharaj. Uh, just one more point that uh, Bhakti is the sure sure process to attain the lotus feet of Krishna and there is no fall down and come back to the material world. Oh. Bhakti is the sure process to attain Krishna. Then there's no coming back to the material. One who comes to my abode will never leave there. There's no falling back. Huh? But one who's a yogi or a mukti, a liberated soul, the liberated souls, they may attain liberation to the Brahman, they can come back. And we, we read also about the, the unsuccessful yogis in the Bhagavad Gita. Well, unsuccessful yogis, they could also be bhakti yogis. They just had not become perfect. Right? And the unsuccessful yogi. One may be doing bhakti yoga, he may not be successful. He may come back, but he will continue. And his success is ultimately guaranteed. And whatever progress he's made, it will never be lost. And generally those who are doing bhakti, they never take to the lower process. But those who may be doing yoga or the jnanis, they may become devotees. We hope they will become devotees. Okay, we'll go ahead. This is a... Thank you, Madam. The concluding verse here in the chapter. Therefore persons whose minds are fixed on the Lord engage in the intensive practice of devotional service. This is the only means for attainment of the final perfection of life. So intensive practice is tiv, tivra bhakti, right? Tiv Tivrena Bhakti Yogena. Right? Have you heard that before? Tivrena Bhakti Yogena? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, where? To second canto, third chapter, tenth verse. Yes. Akama Sarva Kamo Va Moksa Kama Udharati Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajate Purusam Param. Meaning? If you have a all desire, if you have a no material desire, or if you have a desire of moksha, but still you have to perform the Tivrena uh, Bhakti Yogena to the Supreme Lord. Right. You, have to, you should engage in intense practice of devotional service. 
This only means for attainment of the final perfection of life. We have to really become intense practice of the we have to do our sadhana, we have to become really, really absorbed in these things. This is the only way to get perfection. So, Lord Kapila's statement is very powerful. You can feel the potency. Just imagine if you were Devahuti sitting there in front of your son and he's talking like that to you. It would have a powerful effect on you. From Prabhupada's purport, first of all, the mind should be engaged at the lotus feet of the Lord very steadily and naturally, because the mind is the master of the senses. When the mind is engaged, all the senses become engaged. That is bhakti yoga. So Prabhupada is describing to us the importance of engaging the mind, fixing the mind on the Lord, particularly the Lord's lotus feet. And then the senses will also become engaged. They will follow the mind. They're not going to do anything without the sanction of the mind. So this is bhakti yoga. You can see the, the devotion along with the meditation and concentration on the Lord. Okay, are there any questions, comments on this? Any problems? We are very fortunate, Maharaj, to get your association. No, no, no. No questions, Maharaj. No questions tonight? Okay, keep them for Thursday. We'll meet you on Thursday night. Maharaj, there is one person who has raised their hand. Who okay. Is Prabhu? okay, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, I am coming back again to the same. Uh, we, we, we know that uh, the, the subtle mind uh, is, uh, is with the uh, mind, body and intelligence. Uh, 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 how can we understand the senses of the subtle body as uh, Indriya? Uh, in what sense, how it can be perceived, Maharaj? Can you please? Well, I didn't mention anything about senses in the subtle body. The senses are there in the spiritual body, though. So, spiritual body means it is beyond this subtle body. We Yes, the spiritual body is beyond the subtle body. Okay, Maharaj. The subtle body is there with the gross body. But there's no, there's no sense in there. But the mind is there, of course, and the mind is like the sixth sense. And the mind is directing the senses, giving the information to the senses. But the spiritual body, the spiritual body is there. That and with the spiritual body, there are spiritual senses. But the spiritual bodies, it's there within the soul. The spirit soul itself contains the spiritual form, which is manifest when we go back to the spiritual world. So, so, so this gross body is encompassing the spiritual body? No. Well, the spiritual body, the, just as the soul is within the heart, so the spiritual body is there also contained within the, within the soul. The spiritual body is not manifest, but the potential is there. So Prabhupada talks about the spiritual senses. The senses, just like when a person dies, you know, the senses, the sense organs are there, 
but there's no life in the senses. The actual functioning of the senses is not, it's not there anymore. What happened? What gave the life to the senses? You see, that's actually coming from the soul. So we have the spirit, we have the spiritual senses, which is, which are there, which, which actually give the power to these senses to function. But the, the material senses, because we're conditioned and contaminated, we use our senses in the material way. So Prabhupada talks that there's the other senses, there's the spiritual senses. We want to, as you, quote, you quoted, Rishi Kesha Rishi Kena Sevanam, using our senses in the service of the Supreme Lord. So that is the real, the proper use of the senses. And if we don't do that, then we are thieves. We are utilizing the Lord's senses for our own sense gratification. So that is sinful. We have taken the senses which are given to us by the Lord and we have taken them for our own sense gratification. We have to overcome that, that tendency to be independent of the Lord. We have to understand the senses belong to Him. They're meant to be used for His service. So, so this can, is I, can I understand them as uh, the... Um, Purified senses, uh, the same material senses which are purified, turn to, turn to the uh, spiritual senses, can I understand that? Or there exists a separate uh, spiritual senses? Well, it seems like the way Prabhupada has put it there, he's talking that they're separate senses. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Hare Thank Krishna. You. All right, so we'll meet tomorrow on Thursday evening, same time. Please, if you have a chance, look over chapter 26. It's quite a long chapter. There's a lot of information and we'll hear more about the Sankhya Yoga from Lord Kapila. Thank you again. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Yeah. Yeah. One chapter.